Okay, good evening. Welcome to the Township of Lacey Caucus meeting, May 22nd, 2014. Adequate notice of this meeting has been given in accordance with the Open Public Meeting Act pursuant to Public Laws 1975. Said notice was advertised in the Lacey Beacon and was posted on the bulletin board showing the time and the place of the meeting. Uh, we have some special guests tonight. We have Cub Pack 55 sitting in the front row here. I'm going to ask you gentlemen to come up to the front here and lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Just come on up here, guys. All yours. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Thank gentlemen. You. Okay, item number one, annual Fork River Mountain cleanup. Uh, Mr. Jennings is not here tonight. Mr. Devaney, are you going to speak on behalf of Fork River Mountain? I have to stand in front or can I just stand over to the side? I hate public speaking. <laughs> uh, the, um, you need the microphone. Oh, I like, okay. All right. You can walk with it if you can get that far. No, I, I don't need that. It's not. Um, Fort River Mountain cleanup. Uh, Mr. Jennings asked me to read off the totals. Uh, this year, uh, they collected 18 tons of debris, 18 tons of concrete for a total of 36 tons um, were accumulated this year. The grand total for 21 years a staggering 599 tons have been removed out of the woods here in Lacey Township. Fantastic. Phenomenal beat. Now, there's a, a lot of organizations that are participating with the Fort River Mountain Group. Um, the Cub Scout Pack and Boy Scout Troops have been asked to help every single year. Mr. Most have been out with us on numerous occasions. Um, how long did we work, guys? How many remember? How, how, remember, how long were we out there? Two hours, five hours. No, we weren't out there five hours. <laughs> how long were we out there? A couple hours, right? What was the biggest thing you found? Boat. How many boats? Two <laughs> boats. Wow. Now, Mr. Moses said that we have the best in our public works. We have the landfill. It costs them seventy dollars a ton to take it over to Manchester. Someone actually took the time to cut two boats up and put them in their vehicle, take them out in the woods, and discard them. One person was not so lucky; they left the ID tag on the boat and turn that in. So we have the registration and the boat number off the boat. So on behalf of Fork River Mountain Group, we just wanted to say thank you. Thank you to the committee for your support and allowing us to get out there and providing the dumpsters and the uh, township employees who also were out. The gentleman who ran the backup, whose name escapes me, was absolutely wonderful. Um, he did a great job. Thank you. Mayor, you don't mind if I say something after you, do you? Oh, no. No, go, go ahead. ahead. You go first. Well, like Mr. Devaney said, you know, <coughs> illegal dumping is a serious crime. We take it seriously. Uh, you know, the amount of fines and the vehicle could get confiscated if they're illegally dumping. So it amazes me that we have one of the best state-of-the-art recycling center here in Ocean County, and it's very accessible. It's opened uh, seven days a week. and. Uh, also, uh, the Manchester landfill, the tonnage to get rid of it is uh, very uh, low cost to our residents. So uh, I live out in the Pinelands. It's, it's a pristine place, and I want to thank PAC 35 and all the organizations for cleaning the Pinelands and uh, keeping it pristine. And uh, I would encourage everybody to stay vigilant, and when you see illegal dumping happening, you simply just call the police department. Thank you, Mayor. That's a great service you guys provided the town. You should all be very proud of your hard work. And guys, I, you know, I had a, minute, a couple minutes to spend in the back uh, room before the meeting tonight, and I, I also want to thank you. Um, you know, I know PAC 35. I know how active you are in town, and this is just one of many, many undertakings that the PAC takes each year on behalf of the residents of this town. So uh, we truly appreciate it. Uh, we thank you, Mr. Devaney, all the volunteers uh, you know, from Fort Lauderdale. Coalition, you've been doing this for a lot of years, and it's certainly um, something that's very, very important. I happen to sit on the Finance Commission for the state of New Jersey, and believe me, you're talked about very frequently out there as well. So, uh, the word's getting out that Lacey Township truly cares about the Finance. So, thank you very much, and, and Dan the man, I appreciate it, and it was great talking to you in the back tonight. <laughs> Thanks, Dan. Okay. Item number two, one day so, uh, social affairs permit, Lacey Elks Lodge. June Lacey Elks Lodge is holding an event on June <coughs> 21st um, when they need authorization. It's for a money raised uh, to help help autistic children. They're having a bike run. 
and would they need a one-day social affairs permit? I just need permission from myself and the chief to um, sign off on it. Do I have a motion? Move. Second. All in favor? All in favor. Okay, I have one other item on the caucus add-on. Um, I have a uh, letter here. We are, L Lacey EMS just graduated um, eight additional uh, volunteers that are going to be dedicating their time to the squad. And I just want to read this um, little note and mention the individual's names. Uh, and if you're here, maybe you could stand up and come up to the front. Um, before I read the names, is there anyone here from Lacey EMS? No. Okay, let me, uh, it says, uh, this week is National EMS Week, which is from May 18th to May 24th. This year's theme is EMS Dedicated for Life. Lacey Township First Aid Squad 23 had eight new members attend the EMT school January 7, 2014 through April 14, 2014. All eight EMT students successfully complete, completed the program at the Ocean County First Aid Academy. All eight have passed their state exam to become certified EMTs. Uh, we want to congratulate the following members, uh, Jessica Davidson, uh, Dan Danielle uh, Fosbury, Jonathan Jurgen, Sam Kearns, Lily Cuddy, uh, Jennifer Localio, Nicholas Pertel, and Troy Skellinger. Uh, th these are people that are truly going to uh, do a very important job for the residents of Lacey Township. Um, most people here throughout the course of the year, we always have difficulty getting volunteers that we have available during the work portion of the day. So getting eight new people trained and, and on board is a, is a major uh, undertaking for the Lacey EMS squad. And I, I thank them for, for doing what they did. I thank these volunteers for volunteering their time. Uh, and I congratulate them and look forward to them serving the residents of Lacey Township. Any other ones? No, that's all I have. Okay, resolution 2014. We don't need to have that this evening. We okay. have no purpose to go into executive session. Do I have a motion to adjourn the caucus? Adjourn. Move it. Second. All in favor? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, we have no um, executive, so we're going to jump right into our regular meeting tonight. Um, <laughs> I know you guys said you have to get out of here. Some are playing soccer or something. One of you said you're going home to go to sleep early. Which one was that? Dana <laughs> Man. <laughs> So if you guys want to take a minute and uh, you know go out the back door, you know it was great having you all. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Very Thank you very much. Thanks for coming. <laughs> we need you. Yeah, he works for that. Yeah. <coughs> Just another announcement. So look at House of Bursary Presiding on June 2nd, if you could just about read that. And this is our last meeting before we do. You announced this. Yeah. Okay. Now what are the scouts here for? Um, merit badge. They're here for a merit badge. They have to attend a town council meeting. To my, my friends in the back, there are scouts. You're here for a merit badge uh, tonight. You have to attend. You have to attend one of our meetings, or you love you love attending one of our meetings. Okay. Why not? Why not the six of you come up, and I'll ask you to do the pledge of allegiance for our, the start of our next meeting. Is that okay? Then whoever thinks you didn't show can see you on TV. Come on, guys. Let's go. Earn your badge. Which which uh, pack are you guys with? One fifty. Okay. Good evening. Welcome to the Township of Lacey May twenty second, two thousand fourteen meeting. Adequate notice of this meeting has been given in accordance with the Open Public Meeting Act pursuant to Public Laws 1975. Said notice was advertised in the Asbury Park Press and the Lacey Beacon and was posted on the bulletin board showing the time and the place of the meeting. We're going to uh, begin with a salute to the flag and a moment of silence. Uh, this morning we have our, our gentleman here from PAC 156 in uh, Lacey Township and we're going to ask you to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you, gentlemen.
Troop 156 is here tonight uh, earning a, a merit badge, um, so we're happy to have you. We truly appreciate you participating in the meeting, guys. Okay, item number one, second reading of ordinance 2014-10 authorizing to exceed the municipal budget appropriation limits and to establish a cap bank. In order to the Township Lacey County, Russian State of New Jersey, authorizing to exceed the municipal budget appropriation limits and to establish a cap bank in accordance with NJSA 48-4-45.14. Can I motion? Move it. Uh, I'm sorry, it's a second meeting. Uh, second meeting, I'll open up the uh, floor for saying public comment. Motion. Okay. Do we have public comment just on this? Just on this. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah, we'll have public comment at the very end for the public on overall general stuff. Okay. Seeing none, I'll ask for a motion to close the floor. Motion. Second. All in favor? Motion on the ordinance. A motion on the ordinance, please. Move it. Second. Mr. Kennis? Yes. Mr. Most? Yes. Mayor Quinn? Yes. Item number two, second reading of ordinance 2014-11, setting salaries for the crossing guards. Ordinance of the Township of Lacey County of Ocean State of New Jersey amending an ordinance entitled an ordinance of the Township of Lacey County of Ocean State of New Jersey affixing and determining the salaries, wages, and compensations of the officers, employees, and members of the governing body of the township. This is for the crossing guards for the years 2014, 15, and 16. It's a 2% increase. Um, in their uh, <coughs> hourly wage, um, they uh, start at $9 an hour and go up to uh, $15 an hour. Again, being a second reading, I'll open the floor for the same public comment. Seeing none, motion to close. Can I have a second? Second. All in favor? All right. Can I have a motion? Move it. Second. Mr. Kennis? Yes. Mr. Most? Yes. Mayor Quinn? Yes, item number three, second reading of ordinance 2014-12, amending chapter 335, zoning of the township code. In order to the Township of Lacey County of Ocean State in New Jersey, amending and supplementing Chapter 335 of the Township Code of the Township of Lacey entitled Zoning so as to amend Section 335-79 entitled Zoning Permits. This is um, with regards to changing some of the, lo the lowest floor elevations <coughs> of the structures of the inhabitable area of the space. And it says garage enclosures and other areas intended for limited storage shall not be less than eight inches above the center line of the abutting street. These are various changes that are being made in accordance with uh, recommendations from the planning board. And also there are some fees and permit um, fees being changed as well. Again, being the second reading, I'll open up to the floor. Seeing that. Yes, sir. Right, yeah, step up to the microphone, name and address, please. My name is Peter R, 844 Hammond Street in Oak Harbor, New Jersey. Is that uh, in relevance to the damages sustained by Sandy so that everybody's house is being raised can then come up higher than eight inches off of the, the um, existing street line because some of us have sustained greater than eight inches worth of water in our garages at the time where they had at that time set? Yeah, that, it, it really, um, it does apply to Sandy, but not, not 100%. What, what happens is we have uh, our ordinance the way it exists in town right now is some of the um, houses that we've been trying to go out in sandy situations have to raise their floor and their garage elevation so steep when you have a, a, a lot that's fairly close to the street that you have an extremely uh, steep driveway going up. Oh, that's, I'm living that life. Yeah, the, un the underneath of the house cannot be used as a habitable area if you're in a sandy area where you have to raise it up above the, let's say, elevation. Oh, it's only from underneath the house? It it's, for, it's for your garage yeah. floor. Okay, yeah. but the garage floor is going to be concrete, so that's not going to affect anything if I raise it. You, you can raise three or four feet. Yeah, you can raise as high as you want, but you know we're making it at, at a minimum of eight inches so that the houses are all going to have the pitch from the garage floor to the street, but not create a hardship on somebody when they have such a short driveway that the elevation is so extreme going up. So it's it's really just to bring it all into sequence so that it's all the same across the board. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Anyone else? Motion to close the floor. Second. 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 All in favor? Aye. Right. Have a motion. Move it. Second. Mr. Kennis? Yes. Mr. Most? Yes. Mayor Quinn? Yes. Item number three, second meeting of ordinance 2014 12. Oh, no, I did that one, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's we're on the first reading, first reading now. Number four, first reading of ordinance 2014 13, authorizing donation of blocks 2200, lots 39 and 40. In order to attach the Lacey County Bush State of New Jersey, authorizing the acquisition of Block 2200, Lots 39 and 40 from the estate of David J. Haig in accordance with NJSA 48-12-5A1. This is a non-conforming lot west of the parkway in the Pinelands area that the estate is donating back to the township. Can I have a motion? Move it. Second. Mr. Kennis? Yes. Mr. Most? Yes. Mayor Quinn? Yes. I'm number five, resolution 2014-137, authorizing the responsibility of conducting the annual budget examination. A resolution of the Township of Lacey County, Russian State of New Jersey, authorizing the Township of Lacey to assume the responsibility of conducting the annual budget examination. Can I have a motion? Move it. Second. Mr. Kennis? Yes. Mr. Most? Yes. Mayor Quinn? Yes. Item number six, resolution uh, 2014-138, authorizing the budget to be read by title. 
Resolution of Township Lacey County of Ocean State of New Jersey authorizing the reading of the budget by title only. Can I have a motion? Move. Uh, move it. Second. Mr. Kennis? Yes. Mr. Most? Yes. Mayor Quinn? Yes. Adrian, do you have anything to say before we? Uh, any comments on the budget? Yes. Yeah. Um, this, year, this year's budget is calls for a two and a half cent increase in the municipal tax rate. That means for the average home, which is valued at $310,000, a two and a half cent increase will translate into $77.50 per year or $6.46 per month. Um, the state likes us to make comparisons over a five year period of budgets. Our budget in 2010 was $26,117,814. The current year budget in 2014 is $28,673,289, a difference of $2,555,475. That's an average increase per year of $510,000, or a 9.78% over five years, or 1.96% per year. Uh, one of the biggest items in our uh, budget is our salaries. In 2010, our total salaries was $10,031,878. In 2014, it's $10,693,780. That's an increase of 6.6% over a five-year period, or 1.32% a year over that same five years. On the revenue side, we're showing a total of a million and two thousand dollars lost in revenue, and the two items that account for that were last year we had a four hundred thousand revenue line item from FEMA, which we received. This year we have only fifty thousand dollars from FEMA, a difference of three hundred fifty thousand. Last year we had seven hundred thirty-six thousand as an item. A reserve to pay debt service. This year it's only 84,000 or a difference of 652,000 for a total of a million and two thousand um, dollars. The levy cap. The state of New Jersey imposes a two percent levy cap on municipalities with certain exceptions. Our levy cap, we are 188,722 $722 under our levy cap this year. On the appropriation side, we are $1,228,375 under our appropriation cap. So if there's any comments from the committee, we can open it up to the public. Yeah, at this time, um, we're going to jump to number seven public hearing on the 2014 budget. If anyone would like to get up and ask uh, any questions, um, this is your opportunity to do so. Uh, just speak, uh, step up to the microphone, name and address. Seeing none, I'll close the public portion. Can I have a second? Second. Okay. Item number eight, resolution 2014-139, authorizing the adoption of the 2014 municipal budget. Resolution attached to Lacey County versus State of New Jersey, authorizing the adoption of the 2014 budget for, for the township of Lacey. And I'll just go over the numbers again. General appropriations for municipal purposes, 27 million two hundred thousand eight hundred and seventy seven dollars and forty three cents reserved for uncollected taxes one million four hundred seventy two thousand four hundred eleven dollars and ninety two cents total general appropriations is twenty eight million six hundred and seventy three thousand two hundred eighty nine dollars and thirty five cents less anticipated revenues of sixteen million eight hundred and sixteen thousand two hundred sixty eight dollars and forty three cents the amount to be raised by taxes for the support of the budget is eleven million eight hundred and fifty seven thousand twenty dollars and ninety two cents have a motion on this resolution please move it second mr Kennis. yes mr most Mayor yes. Quinn. Mayor yes. Okay. And at number nine, uh, resolution 2014-140, authorizing the employment of seasonal laborers. Resolution attached at Lacey County, North <coughs> State, New Jersey, authorizing the employment of seasonal laborers for the Department of Public Works. These are young, school-aged, high school or college-aged children that we hire uh, for the summer to help us with the additional increases in the parks and the playgrounds. Um, there will be six young men, and the money is funded through the Clean Communities Grant. Can I have a motion? Move it. Second. Mr. Kennis? Yes. Mr. Most? Mayor Quinn. Yes, item number 10, resolution 2014-141, authorizing the exec execution of a contract with the Crossing Guard Union. Resolution attached to Lacey County of Ocean State, New Jersey, authorizing the execution of a contract with the Lacey Township Crossing Guard Association. This is for 14, 15, and 16. Can I have a motion? Move it. 
Second. Mr. Kennis? Yes. Mr. Most? Yes. Mayor Quinn? Yes. Item number 11, Resolution 2014-142. Authorizing refund of a uh, building permit fee. Resolution Attachment Lacey County Brochure State of New Jersey authorizing the refund of building permit fee issued by the Lacey Township Building Department. There is an over um, overcharge in the amount of fifteen dollars for a building permit, and we're refunding on the fifteen dollars. Motion. Second. Mr. Most. Yes. Mr. Kennis. Yes. Mayor Quinn. Yes. Item number twelve. Resolution 2014-143 authorizing the refund of deposit monies. Resolution attached at Lacey County, Russia State of New Jersey, authorizing the release of deposit monies held for the use of municipal facilities. Can I have a motion? Move it. Second. Mr. Kennis? Yes. Mr. Most? Yes. Mayor Quinn? Yes. Item number 13, resolution 2014-144, authorizing the payment of township bills. Resolution attached at Lacey County, Russia State of New Jersey, authorizing the payment of township bills in the amount of $4,156,656.80. Can I have a motion? Move it. Second. Mr. Kennis? Yes. Mr. Most? Yes. Mayor Quinn. Item number 14, motion to approve township meeting minutes of May 8, 2014. Move it. Second. Mayor? Aye. Item number 15, motion to approve caucus meeting minutes of May 8, 2014. Move it. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any add No, sir. Okay, um, just one comment before we get to committee comments. Um, Mr. Curatella and Mr. Dykhoff are not with us this evening because they had prior commitments, so they asked me to extend their apologies for not being here this evening. Committee comments, uh, Mr. Kennis. Uh, thank you. Uh, first, I'd like to thank Casey Parker and the entire Department of Public Works for all the hard work they did on the new facilities at Hebrew Park. Uh, it was a tremendous undertaking, and I think we sometimes forget how much physical labor goes into a project that size. So I'd just like to thank all the workers. Um, I'd also like to, to acknowledge and thank all the department heads and the uh, uh, emergency personnel chiefs for all the hard work they did on the budget this year. And finally, I hope everyone noticed all the pink ribbons that have adorned the street lights and poles around town to, uh, for the Paint the Town Pink event that is uh, raising awareness for breast cancer. Thank you. Thanks, Steve. Uh, Dave? Yes, good evening to all the residents in Lacey Township. I'd like to uh, congratulate uh, all the people that uh, graduated for the, got the EMS cert for the Lacey First Aid Squad. I know they work very hard and uh, believe me, they, uh, both first aids, we have a lot of, lot to be proud of in uh, Lacey Township, the Lanoka and Lacey first aid. And uh, they get a lot of new members and uh, they mentor them through and uh, we should be very proud of all their efforts. I, I too would like to thank Casey Parker for supporting the MS bike event. He did a great job detouring us because we were milling up. We had some road construction around the second lake and uh, it went very well. I think they collected close to a million dollars towards MS, so we came through town, and uh, as always, Casey's on top of his game, so we appreciate that. And also, I'd like to uh, announce that we have Meet Your Na Neighbors for Oyster Creek Community Information Night, June 2nd, which 4.30 to 7, uh, speak with men and women who operate, maintain, <coughs> and support the Oyster Creek uh, Nuclear Generating Station. If you've ever been, uh, it's very informative. They have a lot of mock-ups and they have a lot of engineers. And if there's any questions to be asked, uh, for more information about that, if you'd like to call, you could call 609-971-2185, and that's from Exelon. Okay. Um, we also have, uh, don't forget about the prosecutors that drug form they're having at the Pine Belt Arena, May 27th, which is very important date. I encourage everybody to bring their families there. Uh, I think it'll be very informative. It discusses a lot of issues that are going on in our community. And uh, some of the speakers that will be talking and presenting that night um, actually suffered uh, a terrible loss loved ones due to uh, drug overdoses. So, uh, you know, our police department is uh, really leading the way. It's one of the chief's initiatives to uh, try to combat the drugs that we have in this community. If you read the newspapers, it's, it's throughout all communities and it's, and it's one of our priorities as a committee here. Uh, I'd also like to talk about um, recreation. We, the mayor wrote a proclamation for Nick Giovanni. Nick does, uh, if you remember Nick, uh, he runs uh, for a Relay for Life around the track. He does wonderful work for us, volunteers his time. He's a great guy. And uh, him and Adrian Costa Di pa Paola, they run a free fitness Wednesday Pilates and boot camp 
Uh, if you're interested, you can go to the website. You'll see it's held at Gilly Park Pavilion on Wednesdays, 7th, 14th, 21st, and 28th at 6.30 p.m. It's free. I encourage you to go out there and uh, get in shape. He does a great job. Uh, so uh, I just want to congratulate Nick and thank him for all his fine work. Uh, moving on to another recreation announcement, uh, please announce the Geo Coaching Workshop. And what that is, um, there, if you go on our website, on our township website, you could click Recreation and our whole spring schedule's on there. And this is just one of the events that he holds. Um, the instructor is Dan Tholen. And Geo Coaching is a real world outdoor treasure hunting game using GPS enabled devices participants navigate to a specific set of GPS coordinates and then attempt to find the container hidden in a location come out and learn what it's all about bring your smartphone to download the geocaching application so you can understand and learn how GPS works so I encourage everybody to come out just like I said, click on our website. Also, another notification, uh, badges for the lakes go on sale June 2nd behind our municipal building here in the trailer. So, uh, you know, please come out and get your badges. It'll be a great season. And uh, please don't forget about the Memorial Day Parade that we have Monday, 10 o'clock, to honor our uh, fallen soldiers and our current service men and women. And, uh, I want to thank all the organizations that are involved in that and uh, that support our service men and women and uh, also Home Depot they also gave us donated flags and uh, I guess uh, who puts our flags out in the community isn't that the is that the Rotary Club. Rotary Rotary does they have that will right. be starting on Monday right and I want to thank them for that and Casey really uh, spruces up our bicentennial park for that so with that said, oh, and uh, don't forget about the event. There is a truck dedication after the memorial service at the Lenoka Harbor uh, Fire Company as well. So that's all I have to say. Thank you, Mayor. Thanks, Dave. Okay, I'm gonna start with police uh, stats for this month. Um, the uh, police stats are for the period from May 1st, 2014 through May 21st, 2014. Lace Township Police Department handled 2,741 calls for service during the period of May 1st through May 21st. We had 462 motor vehicle stops resulting in 128 summonses and 82 written warnings. 35 motor vehicle accidents, 107 first aid calls, 90 DWI arrests, 44 physical arrests, and 7 drug arrests. The Lace Township residents uh, Dan and Darla uh, Dabble uh, worked with Chief Paparata to bring the staff of the South Jersey AIDS Alliance to Lacey Township to train parents who were struggling with a loved one who was addicted to heroin, uh, to opiate pills or heroin uh, in the use of Narcan. The training was held during the evening hours on May 21st at the recreation building behind police headquarters. Uh, the Narcan provides the uh, trained family members with an opportunity to assist a loved one uh, should the addicted person relapse and overdose. The medical staff of the South Jersey AIDS Alliance trained the parents in attendance and supplied each family with a, a Narcan kit free of charge. All expenses related to the training uh, were funded through the South Jersey AIDS Alliance. The Overdose Protection Act of 2013 includes a provision that permits a person who may be in a position to assist another individual during an overdose to receive this special training uh, and obtain the uh, heroin antidote, antidote medication. The South Jersey AIDS Alliance was gracious enough to offer and facilitate the training. Special thanks to Georgette Watson, Chief Operating Officer, Babette Richter, RN of the South Jersey AIDS Alliance for their hard work and dedication to helping families in Lace Township deal with heroin addiction. The Police Department is actively investigating multiple daytime burglaries of residences in town. Two additional burglaries have occurred over the past two weeks, one on Fleetwood Drive and the other on Clifton Avenue in the Barnegat Pines section of Falkett River. The unknown actor or actors uh, pried open a window to gain access to the unoccupied residences. Uh, the burglaries have generally occurred during the midday hours when the homes were unoccupied. Detective Brian Flynn is conducting the continuing investigation. Anyone with information regarding the burglaries is asked to call Detective Flynn at 693-6636 or submit an anonymous crime tip through the police department website at www.lacypd.org. With Memorial Day weekend and the summer months approaching, residents are reminded that fireworks are illegal. The Lacey Township Police Department will be strictly enforcing the New Jersey state law prohibiting the possession and the use of fireworks. 
Uh, just as, as I mentioned last month, uh, the police department is, is on a very uh, aggressive DWI campaign. Uh, we're starting the summer this weekend, so if you're going to drink, do not drive, because if, if you're picked up, you're going to be charged with the DWI, and it's going to change your life drastically. So uh, try and do the right thing and be very careful. Uh, it's not just your life, it's the other people on the road that you're, you're taking and affecting. I, I just on, on what Dave said, I, I want to thank uh, Veronica, Adrian, and Linda. Um, Adrian is our uh, CFO, and Linda works with them in your office. Um, budgets are always something that, that are very uh, cumbersome to put together. Uh, it's very difficult because there's always a lot of wants, and there's not always the money to be able to take and fulfill all the wants that we have. Um, we, Adrian, he, I gotta say he's cheap as hell. He, he's very, very uh, much of a penny pincher. You do a great job for us. Uh, he's he doesn't live in Lake Township, but he certainly does a tremendous job for us in Lake Township, and and we certainly applaud you and thank you for your hard work. I know you and Veronica spend hours doing it, and uh, it comes to us when it's pretty much in a completed package. So uh, we certainly appreciate it, and, and it's something that we're happy to get uh, move on and get behind us. Um, Committee member most mentioned that uh, last weekend was a um, 85 mile bike ride, uh, which. Where did it start? Sandy Hooker up in there? Monmouth College. Monmouth College. Um, it was to raise funds for uh, MS, and it's something that's taken place uh, a number of years now. And I have to say, you know, I applaud Dave because um, he has ridden in that race uh, a number of years himself uh, to raise money for a very, very important cause. Um, so, Dave, we, we thank you. Um, I, I was sitting on a few of the roads waiting to see you come by, but then I, I figured, okay, you were probably one of the first three going by, so I really, you know, wasn't able to catch it. But it was amazing how many people came through. But Casey did tell me uh, you went out and checked the course the morning of, uh, and with the work we had going on out at the Middle Lake, it was, you know, you that brought it to our attention that there could be a problem with some of the riders over there being in under construction. So uh, not only is he, he raising money for a very important cause, but he's out there, you know, doing everything he can to make sure nobody gets hurt on our roadways here. So. We thank you very much for what you do, Dave. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Stephen touched on the uh, Paint the Town Pink. Um, this is, if you drive up and down Lacey Road, we had uh, the volunteers that were putting up ribbons along the uh, Lacey Road traffic lights, or uh, telephone poles, I should say. We have some big signs out, out front. Uh, very, very important month, you know, bringing awareness to um, breast cancer. And it's, I know it's been all over the radio, 92.7, 100.1 has been doing a lot of coverage on it. Uh, it's not just Lacey Township, it's being sponsored by Meridian Health, and there's a lot of businesses involved, a lot of municipalities involved, and, and it's certainly something that uh, if you just get a few more people to take and go be tested, it can certainly, you know, make a major change in somebody's life if you're, if you're in that situation where you're going to be dealing with that down the road. So uh, we, we thank Meridian and all the volunteers that have stepped up to um, do what they have to do along our, our township roads here in town, and uh, don't forget, if you haven't done it, get out there and do it. Uh, next next um, weekend, we have our, our carrying on again with cancer or prevention. We have our Relay for Life coming up in um, Berkeley Township. It's a uh, Relay for Life that we do in conjunction with Berkeley Township. We kind of share together and we utilize their park up at Veterans Park to uh, have the walk itself. Uh, Mr. Bender's not here tonight, but uh, there is a lot of information out there. We, we, you know, if you have any questions, you can go on the website and get the information, but it does start next Friday night. Uh, and if you're around, you want to still put a team together. I know there's still opportunities to put teams together uh, and get out there and, and really raise money for another very, very important cause. So uh, we have it every year. and We're very thankful to Berkeley Township for participating with us on it. This past Saturday, we had our, our uh, ribbon cutting over at Hebrew Park on Saturday morning. Um, you know, certainly the park has been there for many, many years, but the governing body last year uh, made a decision to take and, and go in there and do some major reconstruction of the park itself. Uh, not only you know to make it a, a safer situation, but some of the equipment and, and facilities we had were kind of getting outdated. So, if you haven't gone over there and seen it, it, it truly is something worth going over and seeing. It's uh, really it's at the same caliber as Gilly Park at this point in time. It was always a little lagging behind, but uh, we've got beautiful swing sets. Uh, a special thanks has to go out to the Rotary Club in town for donating forty thousand dollars to the governing body uh, to be able to utilize to buy that that swing set that we have over there. They did the same thing for us in Gilly Park, and, and uh, they're, they're always there for us anytime we go to them. They're always there to take and help us out and uh, defer some of the costs that we run into in trying to do these things. Uh, Lacey Soccer Club also made a $5,000 donation. Uh, we redid some of the fields, and again, they, they, you know, they weren't uh, approached and asked. These people came to us. Uh, they're great organizations. They do a tremendous amount, whether it be fundraising or they're, they're doing a lot for our children, just like you know, the leaders of your troop are doing a lot for you gentlemen in the back there. So. Uh, we thank them for all that they've done. But the park, it truly is a, a beautiful uh, setting. Uh, it was, it was kind of special because, uh, for those of you that, that don't know, Hebrew Park is named after Bill Hebrew, 
who was one of our uh, early sports uh, coaches here in town. Uh, Mr. Hebrew passed away back in 1978 very unexpectedly. And the governing body at that point in time chose the name of the park after uh, Mr. Hebrew. Um, you know, he, he was a baseball coach and he coached other sports throughout the town. And apparently from the people I've talked to, he had quite an impact on a lot of young men and women during his involvement in sports recreation. But it was nice because we, we had uh, Bill's wife, Mrs. Hebrew, was there for the ribbon cutting. Uh, her whole family was there, grandchildren there, and it really you know, brought it all into perspective, you know, what, what uh, was created many years ago because of somebody that, that really left an impact on the um, town itself. And on a, uh, another note, there was also, if you're a um, parent of a child, any children in Lenoka Harvest School, and you go to the back of where the um, swing sets are themselves along the fence line, there's also a little bench there that was donated by uh, John Gallo of Atlantic Coast Welding that was put together, uh, you know, for, for uh, Anna Kopak, who was one of our uh, small children in Lenoka Harbor School that passed away two years ago from uh, childhood cancer. So it's a, it's a very touching thing. Uh, we had two of Anna's little friends come up and uh, speak in the microphone talking about Anna and the impact that Anna had uh, and Anna looking down, smiling on them Saturday at that park. So it was, it was very, very touching and it's certainly something that uh, was worth seeing. She'll live on through you know, that park itself. So. Uh, the Memorial Day Parade, uh, Dave touched on, uh, 10 o'clock, we're leaving uh, the Methodist Church on uh, Lacey Road on, on uh, Monday morning. Uh, they're starting to line up on, on the parade, at, for the parade at 9 o'clock down to the Methodist Church. If you're interested in marching, uh, that's great, come on out. Uh, if you don't want to march and uh, you're going to be around, it'd be great to see more and more people sitting along the parade route. Uh, like Dave said, it's, it's so important that we take and, and show the respect and uh, give the people the time that have, have given their lives for us in this country and the individuals that are, are continuing to fight for the freedom that we all enjoy. Um, a lot of our vets are, are getting up there in years and, and it seems each year we lose a few more. Uh, we will be having a memorial service out here at uh, Bicentennial Park right after the parade. So if, you, if you're at the parade route and you can uh, walk up, you know, the more uh, we have, more folks we have there, I think the better it is because it, it really shows the support for uh, people that certainly do deserve it. Uh, and lastly, I just want to uh, announce that this is our last month for three months that we're going to be having two meetings. We're going into our summer session uh, starting June. We have one meeting a month starting uh, in June, July, and August, and then we'll be back on two meetings a month. So uh, if you come out for the second meeting a month, uh, you know, next next month, uh, good luck getting in the back door. So. Uh, having said that, I'll open the uh, floor to public comment. Yes, Regina. Just your name and address. Regina DeSenza, Sunset Drive, Sunrise Beach. I just wanted to announce that there will be the 21st annual Baywoods Yard Sales in Sunrise Beach. One of my neighbors came forward a couple of weeks ago and decided to organize it, and I understand there's going to be over 20 yard sales this weekend, May 24th and May 25th. Come on out and shop. And it's going to be great weather. Thank you. Mr. Moss. Bill Moss, Drive. I'd just like to bring up my form that I normally do on the, uh, the uh, township bills, which are a little bit over $4 million. People should realize, again, $3,434,220 goes to your school system. So you can see our township is running on a very small amount of that $4 million. I'd also like to bring up on the budget where we're raising it <coughs> by two and a half cents for every $100 of assessed value. And our school system is raising it 3.42 cents per hundred dollars on top of the seven cents that they raised it last year. You're also getting an increase, I believe, higher than this two and a half cents from the township, which again shows that the township is taking the smallest increase. I'd like to remind the people that take a uh, tax appeal that whenever a tax appeal is done and the tax appeal is won, the person that has to absorb those lost taxes is the township because the county always gets their full amount and the, and the schools always get their full amount that they charge at the beginning of the year when the tax started. So any money that's absorbed has to be absorbed through the township, which goes out of the budget for the township, which is why you'll never see an increase as long as we have tax appeals. That's all, thank you. Thanks, Mr. Moss. Sure. Just your name and address, please. My name is Peter Hart, 844 Ham Street, Lenoka Harbor. I have a long agenda to get to, I hope everybody has the time. 
I have some facts I want to get on record, and I have some photographs if you have a display. Uh, we don't, sir. Well, I have paper if everyone wants to yeah, do we'll that. look at the photos. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, I guess it started about the fifth or so of, of the month. Code enforcement decided he was going to send armed officers to my house to tell me that my trailer had to be moved. Well, my house was hit by Sammy. But, uh, everything that was in my garage at the time um, is now in that trailer. Here's a picture of my front yard a few hours after the water started going down. If you look closely on my garage door, you see the water line. Everything in that garage below that water line, lost. I foolishly only emptied the bottom drawers of my toolboxes, figuring how high can the water get? It's never even been to the street. Four feet gone. Well, everything in that trailer was in that garage. I functioned out of that trailer in my rebuilding. And, you know, basically, I was told, trailer's got to go. Code says it can't be unhitched um, in the town. And when it is hitched, it's got to be moved every 48 hours, four feet. Well, that's well and good. This is a 28 foot trailer without counting the nose. Okay. Unfortunately, they're not in any kind of order because I just had them printed tonight on my way over. But uh, you want me to just hand you? You can sort through them and find what you like, and you can ask whatever picture for information. But I think it was three times the cops came to my house to tell me about this trail I had to be done with it. And I told them, write me the ticket, I will deal with it in court. No judge is going to convict me for leaving my trailer unhitched on a back road where there's no traffic that takes you nowhere, no pass through traffic, while I recover from Sandy. The governor's been on TV saying, 10 years before full recovery, we're only in what? Year month 20? Right? Well, I'm doing this all on my own. Dreams turn me down. Insurance company paid for shingles and insulation. Nobody's paying for anything but me, out of pocket. I spent all my life savings. That trailer, I only had to buy after the fact to store my stuff for this, from this garage, all right? In front of my house, my tire was slashed. There's a picture in there of a tire with a little slash on it. In front of my house, hood wounds slashed my tire. The code enforcement tells me to pay to put it somewhere. How convenient the township has a pay per parking lot all the way across town, in the woods, behind the skate park. It's going to be safe there, like it's safe in front of the house, right? Well, that doesn't go. I tried to speak with this gentleman the morning of Friday the 9th, and he told me flat out, pay to put it somewhere, or I'm taking it. At that point, I made my way to the police station to try and, no, excuse me, I'm getting out of order here. I tried calling the court clerk, and would that have been you, Ms. Lori? Are you the I'm court not clerk? The court, no, I'm not. Uh, my apologies then. I thought I identified you by the website that says you're also the court clerk. I'm the municipal clerk, and there's a municipal court clerk. So I can see where the confusion okay, is. Okay, that, that's why I yeah. drew my confusion. I, yeah. My apologies. No. Well, I spoke to the court clerk, and she informed me, you can't have a hearing. You should obey the code enforcement without having anything. I don't know where this court clerk gets off deciding what the judge's relevance to hearing or not. But in the America that I know, I'm a United States Navy veteran. My father is a two-term Vietnam veteran. My grandfather fought in Germany in the United States Air Corps. We've given blood, sweat, and tears for this country. When I'm going to see a judge to protect my rights, I think I'm entitled to that. I tried to see the chief of police at 4 p.m. that day. You know what the dispatch secretary told me? We've given you enough time to rebuild, sir. And some unknown officer standing behind her told me to step away, which I did, because you know what would it led to? Silver handcuffs. It's all over the lead to. Nothing good. This township has done nothing for me. Not that I ask to help me rebuild from Sandy other than terrorize me over the last three weeks. Nothing. I've written to the governor. I've written to the attorney general. I've written to Congressman Todd Rundgren. I've written to Senator Chris Connors, who I think you've received multiple phone calls from, Mr. Mayor. Yeah, I'm going to get, as soon as you're done, I'll, I'll say a few words, yeah. Absolutely. And, you know, it's, it's just nonsense that it's, it's, it's a 28 foot trailer with a three foot tongue and a dually truck hooked up to it. I just put a brand new driveway in. This thing takes out my whole driveway. I can't function out of it if it's, it's tucked away into the woods. I rebuild out of this trailer. Every tool I got is in there. I can't use my driveway now because I'm, I'm blocking it off with my truck and my trailer because if I go too far forward, 
I violate the code for how far you're allowed to be close to a corner, because I live on a little corner lot. My, my whole property could probably fit inside this room. Just about. I can't back up, because then you know what happened? Garbage man can't get my garbage, and I block my neighbor's driveway. So my brand new 50 foot driveway, useless. Or I gotta park my trailer somewhere else. And then hope I don't need a tool I gotta run 45 minutes for. My truck held hostage because if I disconnect it to drive anywhere, I'm subject to having my stuff taken. At any minute, this willy-nilly code enforcement guy who's gonna take my stuff if I don't pay to put it somewhere might call somebody and have it hooked up. The cops who came to my house saw no problem with it. When I begged them to write me a ticket so I can go before a judge and I can be heard, decided nothing wrong without writing you any tickets. I, I don't know. I don't know what, what else. What else am I supposed to do? You know, I mean, this, this guy's out of control. Secretaries are telling me you don't need to see a judge obey. You've given enough time. I mean, this pictures in there. All those rebuilding pictures over there. That's the island from yesterday. I was just over on a barrier island. In fact, I was there today. I didn't have to take pictures. I took them yesterday. Have those people had enough time to rebuild? Has anybody, has anybody here been over to the Barry Island? Seen any houses that have been wiped out? Still leaning on each other over there? To this day? Actually, I was there this afternoon because I'm working. So was I, yeah. with my train, working, yeah. recovering. You know what, I work 70 hours a week. I'm doing this out of pocket by myself. By myself. Some of the pictures are at night, by headlight, planting bushes, taking down trees, by headlight. Why? Because I don't get home until sometimes 7 o'clock at night. So I have a little window of 7 till what? 9.59 before neighbors start complaining that there's trains and machines running, I gotta work until 9.59 and I clean up from 9.59 quietly until I'm done, whatever that may be. Sometimes 11, sometimes 12, then I get up at four o'clock and go to work all over again. I don't make much money. I spent all my life savings is getting as far as I can go. I'm on a back of my butt right now as far as, you know, now I got my house, it was built crooked. Somebody, I don't know who, Somebody told me you built my house. You were at my house in an official capacity at one time when I was suffering from flooding. I've got you on film. Yeah, and let me just uh, as let me let me say a few words. Sure. First of all, um, you made a comment about Senator Connors. Uh, my speaking with Senator Connors. Senator Connors was received emails from you as well as the Governor Christie, well, a, lot of people a million people, people, different people. And Senator Connors forwarded me the email and also notified you that the senator oversees state government doesn't get involved in, in local. Uh, issues throughout the township and I I placed a phone call to you last week I spoke to you last week mr. Downing who you're referring to is our code enforcement officer mr. Downing was on vacation I called you back I said when I have the opportunity to speak with all the individuals involved I'll get back to you I was you, told Monday you called you, me today no, no sir I I know what I said so you can you can sit okay. there and tell okay. me okay. whatever okay. you want okay. to say I'm not gonna argue, I didn't I didn't interrupt you so you don't interrupt yes, me sir. I okay agree. So I, I spoke to everybody involved. I've gone and spoken to the building department. I've spoken to the zoning officer. I spoke to the code enforcement officer. First of all, the code enforcement officer is doing what he has to enforce the ordinances that we have on our books in Lacey Township. We don't have an ordinance that says you can just unhook your trail and leave it on the side of the road. Because if we do, we're going to have trails lined up all over the road. They're going to be safety issues for us. Yours is a little bit more of a unique situation because of the situation that it, uh, happened because of Sandy. Okay, there's no doubt about it. There's, there's a lot of difference between yours and a trailer parked on a, a roadway by itself. Having said that, we still have an issue to deal with because you are on a corner lot, you are on a very small lot, and the fact is that when cars come around that corner, if the trailer is in a, a spot where a car doesn't see it, we're going to have a problem. There's a lot more situations where we'll see the truck. I went out and I looked at your house. I drove out there and looked at your house, I believe it was yesterday, um, and I have some concerns with that. It was, was a company I'm involved with build it? Yeah, back in the early 70s, it was built on pilings. And the reason it was built on pilings is because your lot is wetlands. Oh, wait, yeah. My lot is not wetlands. Well, that's my, my concern is I'm going to have to have you bring something into the building department identifying as not wetlands because your lot, when it was originally built, carries the water from over on the other side of Claremore to the north side to Drew, and the water flowed through that area in the back of your house. Now, I'm looking at the pictures you just provided me with tonight, and you're running fill after fill in there, raising the grade of your lot up. When you bought the house, there was no fill on that lot, I assume. No, sir. Yeah, you put the fill in there, and, and by doing that, create a problem for all the neighbors furthest to the south. No, that sir. The water does, do you, let me just explain to you. That the water will not continue to flow and ultimately make it over to the Cedar Creek. So one thing we're going to need downstairs in the building department is a letter from the state of New Jersey saying that your lot, the, the wetlands issue, has been resolved and there's no longer wetlands on that property. Because we do have a letter in the file saying that it is wetlands and that's the reason the house was put on pilings to begin with 
because if, it's, if it is wetlands, you're violating not only no DEP, but you're violating the, the uh, federal laws when it comes to federal wetlands. Can I interrupt just one second? Sure, go ahead. Because the person that was so greatly praised a little while ago, Mr. Casey Parker? Yeah. I don't know how many loads of dirt he pumped in there, because right along where you see the picture where the steel is, he filled in, he put a pipe that went from that sewer that I used to pump out when you right. were there that day, he put a pipe all the way to the back of my property and filled that all in with dirt. Mr. Casey Parker did it. That's the easement that runs through from, from Claremore Avenue. Oh, so they can put the dirt in my yard, but I can't put dirt in my yard. I, I have to be like, make it suffer. Again. And you're gonna try and beat me down with paperwork. I have paperwork from your zoning officer that says, I've looked into this, sir, and it appears that you're no longer wetlands. There's pictures of an abandoned foundation across the street from my house that you can see that's been like that since way before the storm. And if you look closely in some of the pictures, there's animals dying in water-filled ditches over there. That's not something that anybody's going to bother about. Why, why do you think the property hasn't been built? I, I have, it's built. It's a foundation. Exactly. The foundation was put up prior to the people finding out that they had wetland issues. Oh, so the township can do their job and approve all this and let this guy build this house willy-nilly out of nowhere. Well, he just did it by himself. Mr. Arp, you, you know, if you're going to uh, behave the I'm way I'm very behavior. belligerent right now because because my, my everything I own is in that trailer. I understand okay? that. And I've been told it's going to be taken, and I've been told to obey. I can't see a judge. I couldn't see the chief of police, and I've been given enough time to rebuild. I can't get nobody to answer me until I call senators and congressmen, and then you want to say, I'll call you back, and then whenever you call me back. Guess what, Mr. Arp? You didn't tell me about today? You're, Why you're, didn't you invite me to today? Why these these are public meetings. You can come to any meeting I understand, you want. but you know there's an issue going on. Why didn't you say, Mr. Arp, you know what? We got things going on. Why would you not just say, how about you come tonight? Let's get some of this stuff hashed out. We can work things out. We're citizens here. I'm an American citizen. You're an American citizen. I'm a veteran. You only work here part-time, right? What do you make a year? What's that public knowledge? What do you make a year? Let me explain what do you make something. A year, sir? For doing this job, seventy five hundred dollars. Well, okay. good for you. I'm like, is that a lot of money? To, no, that's to, not a lot of money. But you know, I, I, I you, you I assume it was a little more than that. I did assume it was a little more than that. Yeah, no, no you, let you, me just say you something. Make slightly a little bit less than me, all right? And Mr. I bust my ass every day. Mr. Arp, let me just say something. You called here yesterday, and I, I have a full time career. I have a full time job outside of this job. I got two full time careers. I understand that. The reality is, the girls told you on the phone yesterday that Mr. Quinn stops in at you know the office during different times during the week. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Stop the house I, I come in when I have to come in to take care of stuff. I called you back today. The girls told you that I would call you back. I called you back after I had met with all the officials I had to speak with. And the bottom line is, you I understand what you're saying about being a Sandy victim, but you're living in the house. I mean, is that not the case? Because I, I yeah, when I'm by the house, the lights are on. But the, the, my garage is gone. My question is, I still suffered losses that I'm not allowed to rebuild. And now you're going to try and beat me down with paper. Get this, get that, get the next thing. It's not wetlands. Mr. Arp, I'm not going to be able to satisfy you. Uh, apparently you know? not. But let me ask you this. Was the garage there prior to Sandy, or is that something? No. How do you think I got a water line on it? I don't know. There's so much stuff in your backyard. I don't know what's, what was there. What's How do you there? think that garage got a water line on it that said Sandy was here? Are you really going to answer that question? The garage was there is what you're the saying. The garage was existing long before Sandy. Okay. In and fact, the concrete date says 2006. Okay. Where I scribed it in the concrete. And we're 21 months after Sandy, and you still haven't started, for, for the most part, you did your driveway, you put in some, some railroad ties, you did some landscaping, but you I filled my whole front yard. I filled underneath I my yard. That. I took down three gigantic trees. I spent a lot. I spent $15,000 out of pocket. My not, life savings. You know what my life savings is now? A goose egg, less than your yearly salary. Let me explain something. I'm not arguing that fact with you. The fact is, I'm asking you, if it's 20 months, uh, 21 months after Sandy occurred, yeah. and the garage hasn't been built, and I spoke with zoning uh, in, in your office yesterday afternoon. Zoning said that you've dropped off the permit recently. You just brought it in. That's right. Spoke... The day I spoke to the... Okay, but well, 20 months, 21 months after the storm occurred, you're finally bringing a permit into file. I also spoke with our, code, uh, official, or our construction official downstairs. He said that you came in, spoke to him, and that he told you to go for the foundation itself only at this and point in time. That's what I applied for. He's trying to take an expedited... I not the code guy. I said, I said construction. The building guy. Exactly. Construction official. He's trying to do everything he can to expedite the situation so you can get this garage up as soon as possible. The last thing we want to do is make your life difficult. But the other side of the coin is we have a lot of residents that live down there that also want to continue with their existence because they have taken and put their houses back into shape so that the neighborhood is, for the most part, getting back in shape. Okay. So we're getting it from you on one side. We're getting it from residents on the other side. We have to find a happy medium. So here's the happy medium. How about the paperwork I got from the federal government whose applications I have submitted as soon as they were available that says right. you can do nothing to your property that you're going to expect help for until we've approved you or denied you, in which I still have applications pending. So what do I do with that? Stick it to the federal government? Now, don't worry about helping me none. I'm 
just going to go, not worry about you telling me not to do anything. Mr. I'm R. just going to get busy. That's what I'm doing now. I'm filing my applications because you know what? Because I don't want to deal with these people no more. I'm ready to walk away from the house and leave this town. You've done nothing for me but terrorize me. Mr. Arp, the, the federal government issue is really something that you're not alone on that. We've got a lot of rest. Okay, so, so what do I do? Do I disobey the federal government and, and get my applications thrown in the trash because I've gone ahead without their go-ahead, without their say-so, without their approval, because court enforcement doesn't want my trailer in the street, or do I wait for them and here you go, it's 22 months later, you've done nothing. Mr. Arp, you know, the, the reality is code enforcement is doing its job. There's no doubt about What's it. What's your job? What, what's my job? I'm sitting here. I oversee. You're sitting there. Are you the top guy in town? Do you tell code enforcement what to do? Do you set the rules here? Code do you help establish the rules here? Yes, I do. Okay. Yeah. Well, then, is there no leniency for Sandy victims when the federal government tells them that you can't do anything until we've told you to do something? You want to bring me a letter from the federal government saying that? I haven't I don't have to bring you a letter. It's all over. Call the governor. Call your boss. Find out. Sir, Call the Sir, sir. Ma'am, ma'am. Man, don't be disrespectful because you're going to take an, a hey, Well, then start showing me some respect. I've been terrorized in this town. Cops will come to my house because code enforcement has sent them, and they refuse to do anything because they see nothing wrong. And they say, we're going to stay back as much as we can. I'm sure you're going to be all over me now. 